we gather together um, here in the chapel of St. Anthony before the image of St. Francis and companions to commemorate the work of the week of prayer for Christian unity, which will run from January 18th to Monday, January 25th, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. And that day will be recognized in a special annual commemoration in Rome at the Church of St. Paul outside the wall. This year's theme, quote, abide in my love, you shall bear much fruit, unquote, comes from chapter 15, verses 1 to 17 in St. John's Gospel, which I will now proclaim. I am the true vine, and the Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you, just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. As the Father loves me, so I also love you, remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. And now I would like to introduce an old friend of the cathedral, Father Jim Gardner of the Society of the Atonement, who is regional representative for the Catholic Association of Diocesan Ecumenical and Interreligious Office, as well as director of special programs at the Franciscan Monastery of the Holy Land. Father Gardner. Thank you, Father Jack. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. This week of prayer for Christian unity uh, was founded or begun in, 1890, in 1808 at a place called Graymore in Garrison, New York by Father Paul Watson. At that time, he was an Episcopal priest working together with Mother Lorena Watson. He founded the Friars of the Atonement. She founded the Sisters of the Atonement. And together, they worked on this project called uh, what's now called the Week of Prayer for uh, Christian Unity. It's based on the Gospels. John's Gospel, as a matter of fact, at the Last Supper, account of the Last Supper, Jesus says, I pray 
that all may be one, as you, Father, in me, I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Christian disunity, the divisions that we experience uh, day, daily, really, is, is a cause for a lot of people not believing in Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and the life. And it hampers the work of uh, evangelization. What's interesting, I think, is that on the last day of this week of prayer for Christian unity in 1959, where, as Father Jack had mentioned, it, it always ends in Rome at a, a Vespers at St. Paul outside the walls, uh, Pope John XXIII startled everybody at the end of that Vespers when he walked into the sacristy and announced, I'm going to call a council of the church. Nobody was really prepared for that. It was the fruit of many years, obviously, of prayer that uh, a council could be called to update the church and to insert it firmly into the mainstream of what was called the ecumenical movement. Uh, we have a lot to offer, and, uh, we, have, and we need to be full partners, uh, as John the Twenty-Third had, in, had, had his, his uh, understanding, full partners with the other Christian churches in proclaiming the good and saving news of uh, Jesus Christ. Now, we've come a long way, let's face it. I know when I was a kid, which wasn't that long ago, but when I was a kid, we weren't allowed to go into the, the Lutheran church next door to us. Now, we can not only go in, but we don't have to get a special permission, but like we can go to a friends and relatives' funerals, friends and relatives' weddings, and other celebrations. We can't partake yet uh, fully of, say, communion, but that doesn't mean that we can't do other things together and grow in friendship. I really think that, you know, uh, uh, Pope uh, John Paul II pointed out that there are several different kinds of ecumenism. You have ecum an ecumenism of uh, theology, a spiritual ecumenism, where, you know, where uh, scholars uh, get together and try to plumb the mysteries uh, of, uh, of our Savior Jesus Christ and what he has revealed to us. You have a social service uh, things. We all do things together because we realize that we can't address the needs of the world, and, and especially the needs of the poor, we can't do it uh, alone. We need, uh, we need one another. And there's also an ecumenism of, uh, of, uh, of martyrdom, unfortunately, where people, you know, not just Roman Catholics and not just Christians, sad to say, um, uh, give up their lives or their lives are taken from them because of what they believe. There's also a very simple kind of ecumenism, fundamental, and it's a, it's a kind of ecumenism of friendship, where we get to know other people and respect them as friends, respect and learn about what they believe, what it is that keeps them going every day, what makes sense for them, what ma how they make sense of this uh, kind of crazy world in, in, in which we're living. So every day, at, at the earliest days of this, uh, it was an octave, it was an eight days of uh, prayer for Christian unity. And uh, at when, when it first started out, it was over. The people thought, this is crazy, this is outrageous. What do you mean, Christian unity? That we, we, will, we were living under what was called a return theology. Simply put, and, you know, you left, you come back, we're waiting. No, we, we, don't, we just, don't, we, that has been abrogated. I mean, we try to see where we can find common ground and, you know, it used to be an extraordinary sight to see the Pope embracing the head of the Lutheran Church or the head of the World Council of Churches or an Orthodox Christian Church, but this is par for the course these days, and we have to remind ourselves that we have come this, uh, this far. I'm, I'm reminded of the, um, that old hymn, we've come this far by faith and uh, leaning on the Lord. We have come this far by faith. That doesn't mean that there's not a lot more to go. The uh, Vatican just released maybe four or five weeks ago what's called a Vatimecum, a, a companion, a guide for most of the world's bishops to how to help them with their, their task uh, of uh, promoting the unity of the church. It's not an add-on, it's not a frill. According to the Pope and, and to, the, to, the, to the Vatican, it, it, it's essential that we work together to promote the unity of the church. So, prayer. You know, prayer does incredible things, and sometimes we don't realize that. I mean, um, that's why I urge, friends of mine urge, 
Father Hurley urges, you name it. These eight days in particular, 18 to 25 of January, pray for the unity of the church, the unity as Christ wills it and when he wills it, because that's what we want to be. We want to be servants of the word of God, and this is a great opportunity to do that. God's blessing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Father Jim. The actual text of the theme, you shall abide in my love, you shall bear my fruit, comes as we noted at the beginning from a joining of phrases from uh, John chapter 15. And this theme was chosen by the group, including the World Council of Churches and the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity. And here Jesus reminds us that he is the vine and we are the branches. If we abide in him and Jesus and the covenant made in his precious blood, we will be such a healthy branch as to bear much fruit. The image of branches helps believers understand that they are all diverse as individuals, but brought together in one vine. Who is Christ alive in the church? And it can also point out in these times of growing ecumenical witness that the differing expressions of Christian faith are also branches which cannot live on their own and still authentically proclaim the gospel to all creatures. We preach Christ crucified and risen to a needy world, that the world may have hope. And separately, this sap, which keeps all the branches healthy, gets stuck in blocked veins of animosity, distrust, bigotry, ignorance. We recall the violence that our neighboring African Methodist Episcopal Church on M Street, and then St. John's Episcopal Church on Lafayette Square have recently endured. Only open veins will allow the sap to flow, and in only then can all the branches bear much fruit. Therefore, abiding in Christ's love, we're called to love one another. The events of COVID-19 and of the year 2020 and of January 6th at the Capitol. We're not foreseen in the planning of this thing. And yet human society is reminded that through this struggle of 2020 and the week since, we are needier for love, fellowship, and support than we have been in generations. So let the sap flow. Let us pray for increased unity, as Father Jim encouraged, and let us bear much fruit. The, as background, the website of Franciscan contributions for daily prayer and other background can be found in their website under the overview, Prayer for Christian Unity 2021. And now I would like to invite Father Gardner to present a prayer to enable us to go forth to recognize the importance of, a followers, of all followers of Jesus Christ coming together. Father Jim. And thank you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are the vine dresser who cares for us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each person. And yet too often the differences in others make us afraid. We withdraw into ourselves, our trust in you is forsaken, enmity develops between us. Come and direct our hearts toward you once again. Grant us to live from your forgiveness so that we may be together and praise your name. Amen. 